Now, I'm sure you've all used Google before, but Google Stadia, that's something brand new. And here to tell us about it uh, is the vice president and GM of Stadia at Google, Phil Harrison. Phil, I, I said when I opened this show that it's been 25 years of E3. I've been to everyone, and I remember the first E3. You were there with me, and we were hanging out at the PlayStation party in 1995. I do remember. Yes. And you are a longtime industry veteran, and it's so great to have you with us, and also working on Google Stadia, because I know this is, you know, this is something people may have heard about, but people understand this was so important to Phil that you moved your family over to the States from England because you're so excited about this project and what it represents for, I think, the future of the gaming industry. That's and right. I'm really excited to sort of hear from you as someone who's worked in this industry for over 20 years like me, why you're so excited about what Stadia represents. And I think the, the shift that it's going to represent for this industry, or your vision at least, of, of where games are going to go. And I think people have heard of streaming games, but they may not really understand it. So uh, thank you for coming and joining us, first of all. And, and second of all, why are you so excited about this idea of streaming games in a product like Stadia? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And yes, 25 years ago, that uh, feels like yesterday. But and actually, we wouldn't be here without that 25 years of rich Great. history that the industry provides us. Yep. And Stadia is very simple. It's a new generation gaming platform that streams games from a Google data center to any screen in your life. Okay. So your TV, your PC, your laptop, your tablet, or your phone, yeah. the very same game experience, the highest quality experience, runs in our data center on an incredibly powerful bit of game dedicated hardware. And then it just streams over the internet. We've solved the uh, challenges of getting great gameplay into people's homes. Right. And we announced at GDC back in March to the industry, got a phenomenal reaction. And then just last week, uh, we announced whole ton of games and an incredible lineup of support from the greatest developers and publishers in the industry. And you know, you say it, it's one of those things where it's, I think it has to sink in for people. The idea that there's no longer a console, right? It's like you're going right. to have a controller, which you have right there. Which yep. is, uh, this is the uh, Founders Edition, yeah. which we'll talk about in a minute, I'm sure. Yeah. But this, uh, uh, this is really the key to Stadia, is the, is the controller. But uh, you're right, no high-end PC required no dedicated console required. So we eliminate the cost of hundreds of dollars, in some right. cases of thousands of dollars yeah. of expense that gamers have to go through. And then there are other benefits. There are no downloads. There's no waiting to play the game. There's no patch. There's no install. There's none of the maintenance yeah. that gamers have to do. You just click on the game you want to play, and it plays instantly. And again, some people probably hear that and say, ah, you know, that's not going to work. But you guys did do a test last year, right, with Assassin's Creed Project Stream. That's right. And proved to people that this idea of streaming games without a box can work. That's right. And we're not the first people to, yeah. to bring streaming to the industry. This, right. is, this is something that has been trialed on a number of occasions. But uh, it takes a company with the scale and uh, infrastructure deployment of Google right. to be able to do this properly. And uh, we did a test, as you said, last year with uh, Project Stream, partnered with Ubisoft to bring Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a very technically demanding game, yeah. visually very rich. Um, and we proved, not just to ourselves, but yeah. to uh, gamers, and uh, really excited to share it with the world, or 14 countries in the world, yeah. when we launch in November of this year. And that's a key thing. It's like, this is not a pipe dream coming in you know, five years. It's like you said, this November, people will be able to buy in and literally get that controller and start playing across a bunch of devices. That's right. And what we put together was something that we call the Stadia Founders Edition. Yeah. And this is uh, a really simple way with incredible value to get into Stadia. So it includes this custom controller, yep. um, which is uh, called Night Blue. Um, we designed this uniquely and exclusively for the yeah. Founders Edition. It comes with a Chromecast uh, um, uh, Ultra 4K streamer. Uh, you get three months of our pro subscription, Stadia Pro. You get a buddy pass, so you yep. can gift this to a friend so that you and a friend can play together. Um, inside Stadia Pro, you get the full Destiny 2 experience, all of the updates, all of the add-on content, including the latest content that Bungie announced this week. Yep. And something which a lot of gamers are super excited about is that by getting into the Founders Edition, you get to secure your exclusive online Stadia name first. Yes, people, important thing. People are very excited about that. It is important. Um, so I want to ask you kind of about, you know, the, the vision of it, I think people get, I think the idea of streaming. 
think people want to kind of understand a little bit more about some of the specifics. And I put up uh, up on Twitter, I was asking people for questions for you, and a lot of people obviously yeah, have a lot right. of detailed questions around things. I think one thing people are trying to grasp is obviously it's the idea of streaming games, but you're, you're still buying the games, right? Some people thought maybe it was going to be a subscription service where you were going to sort of pay a subscription price like a Netflix and get everything. But the model right here is something like the Founders Edition. You're going to buy that, and then you're going to have sort of a monthly charge eventually for it, and then you'll also pay some amount of money, like whatever it is, to buy each individual game like you would in the past, right? It's up to the gamer how they want to right. engage with our platform. Okay. Um, and we wanted to give gamers choice, and yeah. we wanted to give them control. We wanted to give them choice of how they purchase their games. Yep. Um, not all games will be available on subscription, so they were. Yep. Um, it was important that we gave gamers the opportunity to get the widest yep. possible set of games. But remember that the games are not linked to a particular device anymore. Right. That one purchase gives you the value across your TV, your PC, your laptop, your tablet, and your phone. So any screen in your life. Um, we think that that is a, a transformational moment for, for gamers. They also get the absolute latest, greatest gaming hardware powering right. their experience without the need to buy the hardware. That's a good point, because people are talking about you know next-gen systems coming next year and beyond, and you're sort of saying, in many ways, you're going to keep upgrading this hardware as the exactly systems get right. better and better? Exactly right. Yeah. Um, we just talked about our Gen 1 yeah. hardware infrastructure uh, at GDC, which right. is more powerful than the current Gen 8 leading systems combined. Right. Um, so we think that we can deliver an absolutely incredible gaming experience at a super low price. It's only $129 right. to get into the founder. So will you sort of like, like every year you'll just like turn on, like here's a new upgrade, uh, how will that work? Yeah, we, we haven't announced the specific right. cadence, cadence around yeah. that, but uh, that's the, the plan, is that we okay. will continue to upgrade and update uh, our hardware so that the games are always amazing. Right. So one thing that you know some gamers are probably looking at and saying like the idea of all these different devices being able to play my game is great, but in many ways I have a legacy of library of games I've purchased, and you're sort of in many ways introducing a new ecosystem where I may have to rebuy games I already sort of have or you know buy them for the first time. There is there do you understand that concern some gamers have? It's like hey, you know, I have to start again basically, right? Yeah, of course, and you know that's part of the you know the rich history of the industry is that yeah. gamers have the games that they love to play, but. If you look at the wide selection of developers and publishers that we're working with, it yeah. really represents the, the absolute greatest in the industry. And they understand where the future of the games industry is, is moving and that the opportunity to build a game once yeah. and deploy it to all of those screens is very compelling to the developers. Plus, when the data center is your platform, yeah. you get access to a whole bunch of new compute and technical capabilities that will make games more fun right. and will add incredible tools to the game designer's uh, canon. So we're seeing this, uh, in fact, this week um, with um, Ubisoft on, yeah. on uh, Ghost Recon. Um, they're using the Stream Connect feature which allows you to have this picture-in-picture -picture window of to what your we friends We saw in the playing. video you put out on Thursday. It's amazing to, yeah, see, it's, to it's, see your friends. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. And you know, these are features that can only be done with a streaming platform. Yep. And so this is something that we will lean into. And yes, over time, it will take developers a little bit of time yeah. to unlock all of those features. Um, but that's an exciting future for players because yep. they will get more fun games as a result. So obviously, you know, the model right now is people will buy games. Will you? There will, I assume, be free-to-play games. I mean, DS Destiny's on the system, which now be free-to-play, but you'll allow other free-to-play games as well on the system? Yes, and, and you will also see, in due course, yeah. relatively uh, uh, short order from now, you'll see uh, publishers uh, starting to think about their own subscriptions as well. Right, okay. Um, so we support that on our platform. Okay. Um, you'll see some announcements in, in due course around that. Okay, so a publisher could have, so they would, you would have the 999 subscription or the base one, and then you could have a publisher subscription on top of that, basically, sort of like you buy HBO for your cable kind of thing? Correct. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think that will be for every publisher, right. but I think for some of the uh -huh. publishers who, who have the bigger catalogs yeah. and the, and the, the more um, significant uh, lineup. Libraries. Well, that's one thing I was going to ask you about, sort of the legacy content, because some people have said to me, you know, we know we get Destiny with the subscription. You've said you sort of there will be other games yeah, that will come course. into that. Yeah. But is that, people have said to me, is that going to be like a PlayStation Plus or, you know, Xbox Live Gold where it's like you're going to get games like once a month or what's the cadence of how, I guess you probably can't say specifically, but how often should people expect new content as part of that subscription? I think it's, it's going to be very familiar to uh, the, the current subscriptions that the okay. gamers uh, are okay. used to. Um, and obviously, we're going to work hard to, to put as many great yeah. games and value into that subscription that we yeah. can. 
um, and also um, support free-to-play games as well. Right. And I know you have next year, there's going to be the base version, which is going to be free, right? Correct. So that's the idea. It's 1080p streaming. Yep. But like in 2020, you'll effectively be able to you know, buy a controller or use a different controller, right? Because you support PlayStation Xbox controllers. That's too, right. right. Yeah. And be a part of that. And I'll be able to stream games so I can buy games and stream them for free as part of the system, right? That's right. So Stadia Base yeah. um, does not, um, uh, sure. it, it comes out in, in early 2020. And then, yeah. yes, as you say, you can buy games and, and be able to play those games everywhere you want. Well, I think it's can't, you can't play them on TV. Is that right? No, you can play them. You can. Okay, so, yeah. so through Chromecast, you can still yeah, do that absolutely. or other ways. Okay, so Base will allow you for that. And then, so you said, you'll sort of allow people two ways in with Base that be free, or you can upgrade a subscription, which will then you can go to then 4K HDR, Correct. 60 frames for That's that. That's right. Yeah. Another thing that a lot of gamers were asking me about on social was they wanted to know about kind of the, the platform in terms of achievements, sort of, you know, the overall kind of platform experience and whatnot around that. What can you share about sort of what the ecosystem is around sort of the community for Stadia? Yeah, so the, the, the heart of any modern gaming platform is going to be multiplayer for sure. Yeah. Um, we do not gate multiplayer behind the premium subscription. Okay. So that's an important point that I think... Right, because PSN and Xbox, you're still paying a subscription. You're saying that's we do the base. We yeah. multiplayer because we see yeah. that every game is multiplayer. Uh -huh. So we think that's a very good evolution for, for the industry. Right. Um, we have a bunch of social features in our platform um, that are really putting multiplayer at, at the heart of everything yeah. you know, that we do. Um, and you will see over time, because our platform is a service, the platform will evolve too. Okay. Uh, you also had said that there was, when you announced last week, that there was going to be discounts on games. I think some people have asked me, it's like, what does that mean? Do I get 10% off? Or like, if I, there's a $60 game that comes out this fall, it's going to be cheaper on Stadia? Well, we will work with our publishing partners right. to set the prices that are right for them. But yeah. I think as a Stadia Pro subscriber, yeah. we will do our best to get great value. And you see this with other gaming platforms where they will um, have... Uh, promotions or discounts that come from time to time. Right, okay. Yeah, you know, I think that's the thing some gamers are just trying to get their head around. It's such a different concept of sort yeah, of like it. how it all sort of works um, for them. And you know, you know, some people, I think there's naturally there's a hesitation around this idea of streaming and buying a game that you don't really own at the end of the day. That people have this fear that it's like, you know, I'm going to buy this and Google's going to shut it down or I'm not going to have access to it or I want to be able to download it. Google is incredibly something. committed to this yes. platform. Um, yeah. I'm personally dedicated yes. to this platform. But you uh, do you understand why gamers have that trepidation? Of course. Yeah. Of course I understand. And you know, I think over the next few months as gamers get their hands on the experience and they just see how transformational it is, yeah. um, the, you know, the, those changes will happen over time. But I'm, I'm super excited about November. I can't wait for people to get there. Like you said, that's the, and the fact that you've already done, I think, the test at least you know, proves to people that it's, you'd be in a different situation here, I think, if you were saying this and you hadn't done that test, right? Because it would be natural skepticism. So that was kind of a nice ramp. The one thing that I think you know, a lot of gamers are wondering about is you know, the exclusive games and content and what's going to come out there. Um, Jade Raymond is there. You're building sort of you know, first party group to build games at Google. Obviously, you know, the launch, there's a couple things that you guys have teased that will be exclusive to Stadia. Um, how committed are you guys to doing big budget AAA you know, blockbusters for Stadia? 100% committed. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're building studios, yeah. plural. Um, we're working with second party developers to bring games uh, yeah. to our platform. Uh, very fortunate, as you mentioned, uh, to be joined by Jade recently and uh, she's building out her team. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have some exciting plans. That's obviously though, you know, as I think Xbox, it takes years to build those studios. Course, so yeah. it'll be a while till we get some of those. Until then, are you looking to you know, have exclusive rights to third party games or exclusive features or what can we look at as? Yeah, there, there are. You know, that's the normal blocking and tackling yeah. that you see in the industry. There will be some features that are de facto exclusive because they can only be done on Stadia. Right. Things like the Stream Connect and YouTube integrations um, are, are going to be unique to our platform. And obviously, we want to lean into those as much as we can. Yeah. Well, it's uh, one of those things that, as you said, is, is a big long-term project, I know, for you and for Google to sort of build this. And the fact that it's coming in November, you know, everyone's going to be able to get to try this thing out and sort of see and experience it. Um, but I also and it was ask really you. thrilling to our team actually when we went live with the pre-order on uh, Thursday. Yeah, 
and just to see people in 14 countries pre-ordering the Founders Edition, it well, was people like... people are it was curious, a, right? I think that's the thing. I think people are excited. Was, yeah. And people started sharing on uh, social media their congratulations, welcome to being a Stadia founder uh, messages. And uh, yeah. you know, that was just a really nice moment for our team to, to see us connecting directly yeah. with gamers. Now, today, obviously, Xbox is coming up. Uh, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of talk about xCloud and these other streaming platforms. So when people are kind of, to put things in context, I wanted to give you a chance to sort of explain your strategy. How does it differ from you know, what Microsoft is doing or what other streaming opportunities are? Why do you think this is the path? Well, I think Stadia has a couple of advantages that um, are pretty unique. One is we are 100% purely a streaming platform. Okay. We don't have... Uh, the legacy of a console. We don't have the legacy of a physical media business or a physical um, platform to uh, to maintain. Um, and then, all now how is that an advantage? What does that allow you to do that you can't do? Well, it allows us to be uh, completely screen agnostic. It allows right. us to deliver the same game experience to a phone or to a TV and everything in between. Uh -huh. um, plus, we enjoy as we are surrounded by YouTube today. You know, we yes. enjoy a. a a great partnership with our friends at YouTube, but also with the YouTube creators, who I think are going uh -huh. to become a hugely influential, even more so than they are today, yep. uh, in the way that games get discovered and enjoyed by fans. And yep. So I think all of those brought together, this world of watching games and playing games and bringing them right. together is, is what Stadia is all about. Do you think from a, you know, I think people are, were wondering about subscription and, you know, Xbox has Game Pass and whatnot. Do you think over time that your subscriptions, you said there may be publisher subscriptions that could kind of live on top of it. Would you ever allow publishers to have their own stores on Stadia to sell games to people as well? We, we almost enable that by default because yeah. on Stadia, a game is just a link. Right. And so whether you discover that game through our store or yeah. the publisher's store or Twitter or Facebook yeah. or Discord or whatever channel, um, it's easy to f discover and propagate games. So conceivably you could have like a Steam or Epic store inside Stadia selling games to people? Or, or it could be the outside of Stadia. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately it's just a link. So it sends the, the, the gamer to uh, play the game on our platform. Okay. Um, so we, we encourage that because we want the publishers and developers to take the game to their audience rather right. than always bringing yeah. it to ours. Well, that's an interesting idea because then there could be a subscription service that would have a collection of a bunch of games where there's a publisher, a bunch of publishers yeah. getting together that could live within your ecosystem. Yeah, that, that, would be, that would be conceivable, yes. Interesting. All right. Well, it's, uh, you said, a lot of pieces to figure out. And part of this is, you know, it's, it's uncharted waters as we all sort of figure this out. But I think I, I'm certainly in agreement with this idea of streaming content and the accessibility of things with that controller that I can have in my hotel room here playing a game. Is, uh, is, is a pretty compelling proposition that's going to bring games to more people in more places around the world. That's right. Um, which I'm excited about just for our industry. We want games to be for everyone, yeah. not just the few who have an expensive box under their TV. Right. And if we can change the model from being games being device-centric yeah. and that the games are about you rather than the box, then the games go with you wherever you are on whatever screen you are on. And we think that that is the way it should be. Awesome. Well, uh, Phil, thank you so much for joining us to kind of give us a, a little preview of all things Stadia here. The Founders Edition, uh, people can pre-order today, right? Pre-order right now okay. um, in 14 countries yeah. um, for $129. All right, and coming out this November, you haven't set a date, just November, right? It'll be November. Okay. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it. Thank you so much, Phil, for joining us here at E3 to kick things off. Uh, we look forward to hearing you. more about all the games and uh, content. You said there's I think a lot to roll out over the months ahead in terms of how this is all going to come together. But uh, excited to see what's next. All right, thank you so much, Phil Harrison.